For our opening prayer today, I will be reading a prayer from the 1662 Book of Common Prayer. So if you'll join with me in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who has nothing that thou hast made, who hatest nothing that thou hast made, and dost forgive the sins of all of those who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, fervently lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee, the God of all mercy, perfect permission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you will, please turn to page 357, just as I am without one plea, and stand if you'd like, or sit if you'd like, or whatever you want to do is fine. I, I think we'll sing, should we sing all six? Well, let's just start out and see how we do. <laughs> I'll tell you as we go along. <laughs> turn to page 354. I'll, I surrender all. We did swell on that, Jennifer. I think we'll do all fine. What do you think? 
<laughs> if we get into a state of collapse, we'll just stop. Yeah. So if you'd like to stand, stand. If you'd like to sit, whichever. <laughs> Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of the bloodshed, O God, you who are God my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You, God, will not despise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For many years, I didn't understand the meaning of Ash Wednesday. I always thought it was a Catholic thing, so why did I need to bother knowing about it? I realize now that my thoughts then only hurt myself. Ash Wednesday is something special, something that we should not take for granted. It's a day when we are reminded of our failures. We today don't want to think of ourselves as having failed in some way. As children, we are graded in school and nothing hits quite like an F on a test or an exam. But in life, there are no true tests or exams, no written tests that judge us for who we are. Not really. We come into church on Sundays and we sing and we pray. But we aren't given a multiple choice test to show if we have failed or succeeded. In life. As, as we read these words of Psalm 51, these words that come because David and his failures were reminded in these moments of how great men, even great people in the scriptures, fail time and time again. We're reminded of how so many times the people of God failed God. And even the moments leading up to the cross, when the people of God ultimately crucified the Messiah because of their failures. We are reminded in this psalm that we are sinful at birth, yet God desires faithfulness even in our mother's womb. We are not perfect people. We certainly have never been perfect people. Even the first creation in Adam was not perfect, nor was Adam's children, nor their children, nor their children. And so we today must understand that we are not perfect. We are sinners. And we must call that what it is. We have truly failed. We have sinned. But the beauty of Ash Wednesday is not in the realization that we fail. It's in the realization that within our failure comes an understanding, an understanding in the Messiah, in the moment that is coming. This week I prepared the ashes for today. I was actually encouraged by a friend, don't do it on your own, go ahead and just buy it, it's simpler, easier. But I wanted to do it right. And so I saved the palm leaves from last year, hanging in my house, letting them dry out. My mom would come by and she would be like, why do you still have those palm leaves hanging over there? (laughs) Don't they need to go in the trash? I was like, no mom, not yet. And so the hope and the joy that comes on Palm Sunday, the joy that comes in celebration into Jerusalem, was in those leaves. And as I sat with those leaves, with the metal tin in front of me, I took them and sat them in that tin and lit them on fire. They went from green to 
slowly being engulfed by the flame. Not unlike that candle. And as that candle lit them up, they turned dark and black until they shriveled. And then if you took your finger and touched them, they held no shape anymore. They disintegrated. And so they were no longer green. They held no glory, no celebration. I wondered initially, why was it that tradition stated that our ashes must come from those palm leaves from Easter. And as I burned them, I thought, and I realized that the ashes must be from those leaves. It has to be. Because they are the reminder of the moment when Jesus entered Jerusalem. A reminder of how joyful, how happy they were when Jesus came, how happy we are when we wave them for Easter. Every Palm Sunday. But in burning those leaves, we are reminded of the failures that we made in the days afterwards, the failures that we continue to make. The failures that despite celebrating Jesus one day, the people of God and we, in our own way, crucify him again. These ashes we are meant to wear today. We are meant to wear them as a reminder of our failures, a reminder of our sins, a reminder of how we were less than we were meant to be. And so does Ash Wednesday. I hope and pray that it is always, I always pray this, that you can see the beauty of God. The beauty in these ashes before you. Because these ashes, though they be ashes from last year, from the celebration of Palm Sunday, we're not that far from the next day of celebration. Not too much longer. And so we are given a chance every year, an opportunity to once again wave those brilliantly green leaves. To wave them in celebration, wave them in hope, and wave them in joy for our Lord. I truly believe that we are given a chance every year, every day, every minute, every second to realize our failures and come to God with our confession. We are given a chance to experience the peace that must come through our Lord. And as we mark our heads with ashes today, world war seems so far around us that many of us can't seem to let it out of our minds. But remember that there is still hope. That is part of what today is also about. Hope to remember that this Ash Wednesday, our Messiah is still going to come. Easter is still going to come. Our failures, sadly, are many. Our failures, our sins are more than we can count. That is why Ash Wednesday ultimately is a moment of grief. Because grief is a powerful thing and we should grieve our sins. We should also grieve that our sins are the reason that our Lord was crucified. The words that we say as we mark ourselves with ashes are that we are from dust and to dust we shall return. It is a powerful thing to understand that, a powerful thing to know that we are ultimately human. We are mortal. We are not perfect. But in these days, we still have the comfort in knowing that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, 
is coming. We have comfort in this, but we must still confess our sins. And so as you approach the altar this evening, fittingly as the sun is going further down in the sky, I ask that you come forward and take a moment to bow, or you bow your heads in prayer and confess your sins. Ask forgiveness for them. I will do the same. Because though I be your pastor, I am not without sin. Nor are we all without sin. So if you would, join me in a word of prayer. Lord, this day we confess our sins. As the words in our hymnal tell us when we do communion, we have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have sinned against our neighbor. We have sinned against you. And this evening, we pray, all of us, for forgiveness of our sins. And in that same breath, we thank you for your son who died because of them. We grieve that we are sinners. We grieve that your son had to die for us. We grieve that we are not the people you call us to be. And we pray that even in our moments of forgiveness, that we understand you still love us as these moments of scripture also reminded us. And of course, on this day, we must pray in your son's name. Lord, in your Son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I have below ashes. And if you would come up one by one, I will anoint you with them. Um, one COVID aspect. I've been told by the conference they prefer me to do them with Q-tips. So it might be a little different, but that doesn't mean it's not still the same wound. And at this time, we will do it in silence.
Our final prayer today, we will say together. It is in your hymnals, and it is number 353. <coughs> if you'll join me. Oh God, make sure that we have a king, and we can judge all that you have made. From the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you will raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us a clean heart, and put within us a new spirit, that we may repent of our sins and leave lives worthy of your calling to lead Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Take with us. Take with you these words of benediction. Lord, may your grace, love, and peace go with us. And may we remember always to seek your forgiveness. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen.